Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, and before we get to the topic of today's video, I would like to announce that I have made a BitChute account. Um, by the way, that can also be seen in the descriptions. If you've already read that, then just skip uh, into like the second minute of this video. Um, but I've opened up a BitChute account, and uh, I do plan on eventually uh, shifting some of my content over there, namely uh, my live content, once they have their live streaming service up, because they are far more lenient than YouTube uh, when it comes to what they will air on their channel, so I don't have to have any of my guys uh, you know tone down tone themselves down or do anything like that I can show it all unedited um, and that's kind of the idea so once they get their streaming service um, or their streaming uh, program or whatever they're going to be using uh, up and running I will be transferring all of my live content over there however um, what you will still have dual uploads so all of my regular video content will be here all the news videos um, all my my video series that are just videos not streaming uh, like will it fail uh, the director videos um, movie spotlight all those will be uh, dual uploaded to both sites um, like I said as well as the news videos uh, but I will make a formal announcement when the uh, live streaming stuff is going to go over to there, uh, and I will tell people how to get there. But if you're also on BitChute, uh, don't forget to also head over there and subscribe. Uh, that channel is under the same name as this channel. It's Mad Mike, and of course the uh, Rorschach picture is the uh, is the thumbnail. So. Um, the, also, all of my videos from this point on, not my previous videos, but all my videos from this point on will be dual uploaded onto both sides. So I'm not going to re-upload my older videos onto that site. I'm just going to keep going from this point on. Which, by the way, I did upload my Becky uh, trailer breakdown from yesterday. Um, so now that we're through that and we're at the two-minute mark of the video already, um, we're going to dive into today's subject, which is Disney is remaking the Black Cauldron. Uh, a live action remake. So th this is the latest on the long list. I've been over my uh, my feelings on Disney live action remakes. I think they're hollow. I think they're soulless. I think they're 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 bad for the company as a whole in terms of a creative standpoint. Um, and even though they do they do make money ultimately, it just degrades the product uh, over time. But uh, the thing is, is that Disney had lost control of the source, uh, the rights to the source material uh, for the Black Cauldron for a number of years uh, after the film was made, because the film was a critical failure. The film made uh, about $22 million on a $44 million budget, so it lost a fair amount of money. Uh, and Disney at the time was not obviously as booming of a company as it, as it uh, became later on. So that was a tough financial hit for them, especially, you know, at that time period. Again, it was well before you had stuff like Lion King. Uh, and I think Little Mermaid came out after 85. Yeah, Little Mermaid was like late 80s, early 90s. And then you also had Aladdin, you know, those big three in the early 90s that really propelled Disney up um, for, you know, most of that decade and beyond. Um but, like I said, uh, Black Cauldron really was kind of a... It's based off of a series of fantasy novels. It's a total of five books. The first Black Cauldron movie, the animated one, uh, combines the stories of the first two books. Um, and now, he, here's the thing that we have. So, uh, Disney was able to reacquire the rights to the source material, which is the five-book series, in 2016. Um, and after that, they kind of sat on the property. Now, it's been about four years since then. Uh, I don't know the exact date of when they actually acquired said property, but um, the thing is, is that these things have a time limit. Like, you have to do something with it. You have to, you know, you have to uh, show that you're putting something into production, basically, or, or at least attempting to. Uh, you know, the, the, there's been some famous historical examples. The, the, there's been Rush stuff. There's been stuff like uh, Roger Corman's Fantastic Four, where the studio literally just had him make a movie with it just so they could keep the rights, and they never even released it. They just gave him a million dollars and said, go make a Fantastic Four movie. Um, it's honestly not as bad as people think it is. Um, at least when compared to the other ones. Uh, but going on from that, uh, the Black Cauldron has been in their hands for four years, and we haven't heard anything about it until now, um, based on, you know, from the time they actually acquired the property, which was, again, was 2016. So they're probably just making this movie to keep the rights. Again, I don't know how long they bought those rights for or when they're supposed to revert, uh, but. It seems like this might be a situation, because the thing is, if you buy rights to something, 
Generally, you want to make something with that. That's usually why people get those rights, unless you just want to sit on them so other people can't get them. And that's what a lot of studios tend to do uh, with rights to large franchises or franchises they think could be uh, competitors to franchises that they're doing now. Uh, so Black Cauldron really kind of falls squarely into the fantasy realm of stuff. It, it, if you did make one, I could see it possibly being profitable, depending on how dark they went with it, because of uh, the popularity of fantasy shows. Uh, you know, obviously you had Game of Thrones. Uh, I believe it's uh, Amazon is doing the Lord of the Rings series. Uh, Netflix has been doing The Witcher, uh, which is getting a second season. Um, so, so there's a lot going around with with fantasy stuff right now, and it doesn't surprise me that they would be looking into something in that realm. Again, they kind of deal mostly in the uh, fa kind of fantastical to science fiction. Again, you have Star Wars and, and Marvel, which kind of cross the lines uh, between fantasy and science fiction. Uh, so, that that's not as surprising to me. Uh, it is a little surprising that they would announce this title as their next live-action remake, because I know they, they probably still have some other stuff on the table uh, that they could go to that's more recognizable than this. You still have stuff like The Rescuers. Um, I'm trying to think. There, there's definitely a bunch more that they have kind of in the pipeline from before uh, that they could do. I think, I can't remember if Secret of Nim was a Disney movie. I don't believe it was. Um, but the, the, the point is, is that uh, this is now on the slate. So the, the only problem is, is this being rushed? Um, I personally think it probably is, and we're going to see that in the development process. You know, if they announce the, that they're planning, or I shouldn't say they announce. And by the way, this is not necessarily an official announcement. This is rumor uh, that this is going on. This is not an official announcement by Disney that they are making this film. It is rumored that that is the next film on their docket uh, for the, uh, the live-action remake treatment. So... I personally think they're making it to keep the rights, and they're probably going to rush this thing, and it's probably not going to be very good. Again, the original did not even make money. Um, even though I don't really mind the original, I, I think it's an alright film. It, it doesn't stand out in any way, shape, or form to me other than the, the animation itself. Uh, you know, the, the story's somewhat basic. Um, it's been a while since I've seen it, but... You know, it, it, it's it's one of those movies that's kind of forgettable. So I can understand maybe doing a remake of it and doing something better, or maybe doing something close to the source material. I've actually never read the books either, so uh, I don't know if the books are drastically different than the film. I would imagine they are, since you combine two books into a two-hour animated film, or maybe not even two hours. I don't know how long the runtime for that film was. Um, but it, it doesn't really make sense... To, to just remake the same type of movie. And the, the only, again, because it's a five book series, the only thing that I'm concerned about is are they going to try and shove those five books into one movie? Are they going to do what they did with The Dark Tower and fuck it all up? Um, which I, again, I think is another possibility depending on how, who you get for a director and who you get for producers and stuff like that. Again, we have no official announcement of this, so I do not know whose creative control this would necessarily fall under, and that there is nobody currently attached to the project, obviously. Um, but that's really what's going to determine kind of my feeling about this, is who, who they're going to get to direct it and who they're going to get to write it, um. And if they, even if, they, if that turns out to be the same person as well. Um, but, you know, and then eventually after you get past that point, you know, who they're going to cast and what's going to happen and what the premise is. Um, you know, I, I think if they were smart, what they would do is they would try and do somewhat of a direct adaptation and just do one book, one movie. And then you have a five movie series. And if the first one is successful, then then great. Then you make four more. But if the first one isn't isn't yeah, excuse me isn't successful, then you can drop the series. You can go to something else. Um, and I think the other th the other problem is toting this as a live action remake. Um, if you want to actually just call it the Black Cauldron and call it a remake, uh, because if the source material is drastically different than the actual animated feature, and the people that you're trying to appeal to are people that were fans of the animated feature, uh, you're probably going to scare them away because it's not going to be the the film they remember. Um, so I feel like you're going to alienate an audience in that scenario as well, if it is the case that the source material in the movie are drastically different. Um, so moving on from that, there's really not uh, a whole lot else that I can dissect about this other than just you know doing the basic speculation, which I've already done. Um, but here's the thing, is that today, with the way that these live-action remakes seem to be going, 
Um, until they stop making money, Disney is not going to stop making them. And I think the Black Cauldron is one that I could see very much not making money. Um, I could see that. I could see that bombing horribly. Uh, because the thing is, you don't have a lot of a base for the original film. Uh, you know, there, there, it has a cult following, but it's not, it's not anything huge. Um, if you're going to do a live action remake of a large scale fantasy film, you're probably going to be dumping somewhere around the $200 million mark into that film, which we don't know what the movie landscape is going to look like in a few years, you know, a after the whole Corona thing, if we're going to go back to normal or if there's going to become some kind of a, a weird amalgam of the, uh, directed video releases along with the theatrical releases. So we don't know if the $200 million film is going to be something that's as common in a few years as it is, as it has been recently. Um, so you have that problem. Um, and then on top of that, you have the idea of trying to write what I would assume to be a contained story, um, out of these five books, um, you know, or, or, you know, turning a book into, into the movie. So, cause again, I don't know how adaptable the material is either. Uh, cause obviously the first Black Cauldron was not uh, a success. People did not watch it. Uh, so if maybe they had to change it so much because it was unadaptable, that's another question that I have as well. Again, I'm not as familiar with the source material as I am with the film. Um, but, you know, the, 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 this is mostly just speculations by me. Again, this is all rumor uh, currently. So, you know, we're going to have to wait for Disney to confirm it before we start diving into some actual stuff and have them start making some announcement, uh, announcements on who the creative teams and stuff are going to be on this project. Um, so I can't say too much for now, but I'm not, uh, because of the, the large gap between the acquiring of the rights and the actual rumored production of the film, um, I would say they're doing this for, in order to keep the rights, which is not why you should make a movie. Um, you, you should make a movie because it's a movie that should be made. Uh, that you think should be made. That this movie is being made just basically so that nobody else can get their hands on the rights to it, which is very shallow and childish of Disney, especially given the fact that they basically loom over the entire entertainment industry at this point. Um, but that, that's just my thoughts on this. I want to know what your thoughts on, on this are. Are you a fan of the original Black Cauldron? Would you like to see a live-action remake? Do you think, like I do, that maybe they're doing this just to keep the rights to the film uh, and not because they actually want to make a legitimate live-action Black Cauldron film? Um, uh, so, you know, put your thoughts in the comments below. As usual, I like to read them. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Hit the like button. Subscribe. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?